Well, now with Pete Wishart, who's got his national party MP for Perth and North Perth. Hello to you. Good morning. Uh, do you agree with your Conservative uh, colleague, Robert Halpern? You're all spot on. I mean, this is disenfranchising millions of people right across the United Kingdom whose Member of Parliament will be, for a number of reasons, unable to participate in a series of votes today, whether that's because of, as Robert so adequately describes, because of shielding health-related issues. But in my case, travel is just almost impossible to get down to, from rural Persia down to London today. There's only one flight from Edinburgh Airport, and I'm not entirely sure how exactly how I'm supposed to be able to make it. So this is an absolute travesty and nonsense. And to, Observe members of parliament queuing up for over a kilometre just to say yes or no to a question will be utterly bizarre today. And I'm sure the whole nation will be watching the spectacle with mirth, laughter and amazement. Or, or, or bafflement. I mean, I'm genuinely puzzled and I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely curious as to why you, for example, in your constituency, are not allowed, allowed to vote by proxy or online. And the same for Mr Halpern, who's much nearer to Westminster. It's just utterly bizarre. And it is but what's just, he, why do you say it? What, what's going on? There's a couple of things that I think are at the, the heart of this. And you know, you're, you're right, you know, electronic remote voting has worked perfectly. I mean, I've been able to sit in rural Persia with my iPhone to decide how I want to vote in the House of Commons. Nothing could be more easier today. Nothing could be more difficult in order for me to exercise my vote. Now, there's a couple of reasons I think it's behind this. And one is the very obvious distress of Boris Johnson in the House of Commons as he appeals to his backbenchers who are no longer there to cheer him on in whatever ridiculous assertion he's making. I mean, do you really, do you really that believe that's one of the reasons why you're not being allowed to vote, why, you, why you're effectively a parliamentary eunuch to yours, to use Mr Halpern's phrase? That's one of the reasons, because people have to be back to sit behind Boris Johnson. Well, we, you've got to be socially distanced anyway to, to, to kind of bolster him on and cheer him on during PMPs on a Wednesday. Well, I think this. I don't think that's a key reason, and I'll get to this. I, I think that was the was the, the, the thing that started the debate about all this. It was a, a general unhappiness amongst the Whips team in the Tory Party, which then was charged to find other sub solution. But I believe the major problem and issue is that the Conservative Party really believe in this idea of headcount votes. It's something that Jacob Rees-Mogg refers to going back to the 15th century. This fight to turn up and assert your democratic principles by appearing physically in Parliament. And there seems to be this, these new fogies in the Conservative Party who really sort of respond to this type of message. They get to speak to ministers in the division lobby. Now, I've probably, I've been in Parliament almost 20 years. I've counted that I've probably wasted a month of my life just exercising the decision whether it's yes or no, but they seem to really, really enjoy and appreciate it and ensure that it's going to be foisted on the rest of us. It can't work during the pandemic. It was nonsense during normal times. Now it's nonsense and dangerous. I would like to ask you, Mr Wishart, if you would, for those who want to learn more, physically what happens when you vote in the House of Commons? You walk into different lobbies, but just describe it for our viewers, both here in the UK and right around the world. It's, it's one of the most bizarre procedures in a democracy anywhere in the world. The bells ring and you've got to go into the Iron No lobby and you're going to, you find yourself in these cramped so, so hang on, I'm going to pause you there. So when you say a lobby, what is it? Is it, is it like a foyer of a hotel? Is it a corridor or what? It's a corridor, a very confined corridor, not much wider than probably your living room. And all of a sudden, I mean, just say this, the Liberal Democrats, for example, with the 10 members decide to call a vote, there could be 630 members of Parliament in the current lobby. Now, there's already examples of members of Parliament who've experienced all sorts of health issues, and it's been cramped and it's been hot, and there have been particularly difficulties around voting. To do this during a pandemic, it was just, it's an unstarter, and at least they've decided to abandon this. So but what they've tried to do, instead of getting us back to remote voting, which we could all do seamlessly and easily and readily, they're going to have us queuing up right out the lobby of the House of Commons, right down Westminster Hall, probably out into carriage gates, and they'll take, it's a queue that they reckon will take about an hour and a bit to be able to conclude us voting. We could snake for 1.2 kilometres. Okay, I that yeah. Just, to go, just to go back to what happens when you go in the corridor where you're either voting yes or no, how do you actually vote? What physically happens? Well, there's, there's some very nice clerks with a big sheet with your name on it. They've, they've been given iPads like this. So you give your name as you go through this lobby. I would say, keep my shirt, and that's all I need to do. And then there's two people outside, two tellers, one from the government whips and one from the whips who called the vote. 
and they then will count your head. Traditionally, the seeing going through on the nod applies to what happens in the division where you shake your head and you go out. This could take up to 15, 20 minutes. And if there's multiple votes as there was during the Brexit exercise, you, know, you could be going round in circles for hours just voting. And this is what happens normally in how the House of Commons decides to do its business. It's, it's, there's like nothing else in any other parliamentary democracy in the world. Most other democracies are buttons you press, yes or no, that's it done. Not in the House of Commons, for some reason. Thank you very much for joining Tracy for explaining all that for us. Thank you. Pete Wishart of the SNP.